was produced with information from Aviation News Talk, the National Transportation Safety Board, the Aviation Safety Network, and CBS News Channel 13, Sacramento, California. Let's get started with the departure. Pilot is engaged and the aircraft assumes a westerly direction. The TBM 960 climbs to 30,000 feet and cruises with a ground speed of about 280 knots over Colorado, Utah, and Nevada before entering California. Before the tower closed at the Truckee Airport, the controller described the RNAV options to the pilot, including the directions to avoid a large band of precipitation. The wind direction was not a significant factor, as runway 11 and runway 20 were both given as options to the pilot. Go at your 1 o'clock at about 40 miles, a pretty large band of moderate precipitation. So I was going to leave you on that heading for about 10 more minutes, and then I can bring you in. We can we can do the RNF 11 if you want. Uh, we can do the RNF 20. Either way, we could go Alpha. We could go start from the east uh, point Woodpa. All those would be fine. Mr. Lima Pop. Okay. Um, yeah, but we'll, you can plan for Alpha. I think once you're over the lake and you look at where Woodpa is, it looks. On mine, kind of looks good. I think it's just in between you and Woodpa. If you went straight to it, it would be you wouldn't be happy going straight at it. But the angle will we'll bring you to the south. I think you'll, you might like it. But we can always change our minds. We'll plan for all of us. After the RNAV options were described, the pilot was cleared to descend to flight level 220, and then later cleared for the approach. The pilot flew the RNAV approach for runway 20. We now pick up the flight at 6.23 p.m. where the aircraft is over Lake Tahoe at an altitude of 13,250 feet. The pilot maintains an altitude of 13,250 feet when arriving at the initial approach fix of Woodpa. As the aircraft approaches the waypoint Awiga, the glide path is captured and the descent continues. The aircraft crosses the intermediate fixed point at 12,000 feet. The aircraft is now about 10 miles out from the airport and descending on a 3.5 degree glide path. The approach mode is on with the aircraft following LNAV and VNAV.
The plane will follow the waypoints of Osti, Lumo, the final approach fix, then Zilto, Boffs, Yanku, and finally Winub. The RNAV procedure for runway 20 brings the aircraft in at an offset angle of 14 and a half degrees. In this Google Earth image, the approach path in the magenta color is shown in relation to runway 20. This demonstrates the 14 and a half degree offset to the runway orientation. The weather at the time of the accident was winds calm, one half to three quarters of a mile visibility, and the sky overcast at 900 feet. The MDA or minimum descent altitude for this approach is 582 feet AGL with at least one mile of visibility. The TBM 960 is now about three and a half miles from the threshold of runway 20 with a descent rate of 900 feet per minute. The missed approach procedure for the runway 20 RNAV calls for a right hand turnout and climb to 12,000 feet to Griot. I should re emphasize that the plane is continuing to descend on the approach with reported visibility quarter to a half a mile less than the minimum of one mile. The airport NOTAMs reported the visual approach slope indicator VASI lights were not operational for runway 20. Recorded audio from the common traffic frequency revealed clicks that were consistent with the pilot attempting to activate the runway lights. At Winub, the airplane does not turn to the runway heading but continues on the same approach heading that is offset from the runway. The aircraft is now to the left of the runway and goes about 200 feet below the MDA. The pilot flies level at about 6,750 feet for the next minute when he should be climbing in the missed approach. 1.3 nautical miles beyond the missed approach point, a right turn is initiated but the plane still remains level in the turn. The airplane pitches up quickly one more time gaining 350 feet of altitude but then rolls left and then descends rapidly before impacting the ground about a half a mile north of runway 11. The accident site was located in snow-covered terrain adjacent to railroad tracks about 3,200 feet north from the approach end of runway 11. The terrain was dense, thick brush and mature trees. The wreckage was found distributed over an area of 300 feet, with the nose wheel tire being one of the farthest pieces of recognizable debris, consistent with the airplane impacting with the landing gear in the extended position. The pilot may never have configured the plane for a missed approach climb out. Truckee Tahoe Airport sits at an elevation of 5,900 feet above sea level. This airport has a higher risk of accidents due to weather, density altitude and the terrain. This accident makes a strong case for using an alternate airport, especially when the visibility at the destination airport was below minimums. Reno Tahoe International Airport was only five miles to the right of the approach path, and the weather at the time of the accident was much better with five miles of visibility. One can only imagine the stress level when flying through minimums and not seeing the runway. This image shows the final flight path at the Truckee Airport. It is noteworthy to see the autopilot off at the runway threshold, indicating the pilot to be hand flying the airplane parallel to runway 20. The autopilot is on at the apex of the turn, 
followed by four altitude selection changes to 9,300 feet, but not to 12,000 feet as per the missed approach. The aircraft is on an appropriate heading to Griot. The autopilot is then off just moments before the crash, leaving many unanswered questions. Hopefully the final NTSB report will shed more light into the details leading to the loss of control. It is clear that the pilot did not see the runway, as the aircraft never changed direction and continued to fly left of the runway. Truckee was the home airport for the pilot, so he was familiar with the runway approaches. Proficiency may have entered into the equation in this flight in regard to the missed approach procedure. The aircraft continued for 1.3 miles past the missed approach point and remained level when the airplane should have been in a climb. Something was certainly amiss at this point in the flight.